Emerging straight from the twisted imagination of British novelist John Wyndham, these children are absolutely terrifying. They came into the world nine months after a mysterious event isolated the peaceful hamlet of Midwich in England. On that dreadful night, a mysterious silver object appeared in the sky, and the small, uneventful village found itself cut off from the rest of the world by an invisible force field. That night, everyone lost consciousness, and the next day, the English village returned to its age-old calm and normal routine. A few months later, 31 boys and 30 girls were born on the same day and at the same hour. From the very first hours, they were the subject of curious observations, as they had abnormal appearances. Indeed, the newborns had hypnotizing golden-colored eyes, abnormally silky blonde or silver hair, and golden or metallic skin. They did not resemble their parents at all, and they were both beautiful and frightening. But beyond all this, they were endowed with supernatural and terrifying powers. They grew very quickly, and their minds allowed them to have telepathic control over others. But the worst was not there, for although they were not brothers and sisters, they all looked alike. And as if that were not enough, all these children were devoid of compassion. Of course, the village soon began to realize the magnitude of the danger they represented. This incredible science fiction novel inspired two films, The Village of the Damned, by Wolf Rilla in 1960 and The Village of the Damned, by John Carpenter in 1995. The story, although fictional, is so poignant that to this day these children remain the most mysterious in the cinematic world. In fact, mysterious children also exist in real life. If you want to see them, stay until the end. Here are the secrets of the most mysterious children in history. History once witnessed the mysterious appearance of quite extraordinary children in the English village of Woolpit. Indeed, in 1150, the inhabitants of this village made a surprising discovery. They came across two young children in poverty, with very strange appearances and dressed in bizarre clothes. I can already hear the jokers among you saying that they might have been extraterrestrials, but no, these children were indeed human beings, at least according to what is told. According to Historic UK, these children, who were brothers and sisters, were actually spotted crawling out of one of the pits meant to catch wolves while the reapers were busy collecting field crops. And the least we can say is that they looked rather peculiar, especially since they spoke an incomprehensible language. But that's not all. It is also reported that the two children were taken one day to a certain Sir Richard K.N.N., who lived nearby. But when he offered them food, they categorically refused to eat it. However, the story does not end there, as little by little these children suddenly began to lose their greenish color and finally started to eat the foods that had repulsed them some time before, which obviously left the inhabitants perplexed. Unfortunately, several months later, the boy fell ill and died. The young girl, for her part, continued to thrive under the care of the villagers. In a short time, she mastered the English language and was finally able to tell her strange story. She said that she came from a distant country called St. Martin. One day, while she was with her brother feeding their father's flocks in the fields, they both heard a loud sound, presumably from bells. They were so fascinated by the sound that they continued to follow it until they suddenly found themselves near the wolf trap where they were discovered. After a more thorough interrogation, it was learned that her country was Christian but different from England. Even stranger, where she came from, the sun did not shine, there was, in fact, a twilight light. And that's about all that could be extracted from the mouth of this child. But then, why did these two children have green skin, you might ask? Well, while some think they were extraterrestrials, others have more realistic theories. For instance, these children could have been poisoned with arsenic and left for dead, hence the green color of their skin. Or it could have been chlorosis resulting from malnutrition, which perfectly matches the fact that they did not eat the food offered to them at first. And this also explains why, over time, the green color gradually faded as their diet improved. But Historic UK comes with another explanation. It notes that these children could have been the children of Flemish immigrants who were killed by King Stephen or King Henry I. Thus, the indecipherable language of the children could simply have been Dutch. 
As for the twilight they described, it could have been the leafy darkness of the nearby Thetford Forest. Whatever the case, while many continue to try to find an answer to this mystery, others question the very existence of these children. And what do you think? Let us know in the comments. Before continuing, don't forget to click here to subscribe if you like this video, and activate all notifications so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Now, we move to the 19th century with the mysterious lost prince, Caspar Hauser. He is believed to have been born on April 30, 1812, and died on December 17, 1833. He is known for having been an orphan, his obscure origins, and his mysterious death, which caused a great scandal. His case continues to this day to shake the opinion of several European historians, criminologists, and artists. Here is his story. On May 16, 1828, in Nuremberg, Germany, a cobbler and a master builder coming out of a tavern saw a 15-year-old boy coming from the bare Pittsburgh street, tired, staggering, and moaning incomprehensibly. He held in his hand two letters that he handed to them. The first missive, written in Gothic script, was addressed to the captain commanding the 4th Regiment of Light Horses. Full of language errors, it recommended to his good care a young boy who wanted to serve his king faithfully. Its author, who is anonymous, claims in the lines that it was he who raised the boy in secret. The second letter, written this time in Roman script, adds more mystery to the first, as it was supposedly entrusted in 1812 to this anonymous tutor by the boy's own mother. But something sounds wrong, as the two letters seem to have been written by the same hand, on the same paper, and moreover, with the same ink. The two men then accompanied the boy to the captain's house, but in his absence, it was his wife who received them. They served him drink and food, but the teenager only asked to sleep. He slept that night on the straw bedding they arranged for him in the stable. Once awake, the only information that could be extracted from him was his name and first name, he called himself Caspar Hauser. Caspar knew only about 100 common words and seemed to come from an isolated land. He was still able to express himself and was accustomed to human presence, but he was not the most sociable in the world. After being incarcerated for a few days and then released, Caspar was entrusted to the care of schoolteacher and poet George Friedrich Daumer. It was with him that he learned to read, write, and draw. Over the days, the young man finally began to talk about his past. He made Daumer understand, as best he could, that he had been locked up and mistreated in a dungeon with two wooden horses with which he had played for years. He spoke especially of the nanny who took care of him when he was little. In light of such a revelation, Daumer then thought that the child was the embarrassing offspring of a known personality. He then tried to establish the list of children from families likely to have been stolen at birth about 15 years earlier. Thus, his investigation led him to the trail of the heir prince of the court of Baden. On October 17, 1829, a twist occurred, masked individuals attacked the young boy after forcibly entering his room. They administered several axe blows, injuring him in the forehead but fled, leaving him unconscious in his blood. After this assault, Caspar Hauser was transferred to the home of an assisting judge, Gottlieb von Scher. King Louis I of Bavaria intervened on his behalf so that he could benefit from police protection. But on April 3, 1830, the unknown man from Nuremberg was once again the victim of an assault, this time with a firearm. He emerged superficially wounded in the temple. People then began to gossip and wonder if he was not being sought after or if someone did not want him dead. The mystery of Caspar Hauser thus thickened even more, especially since on December 14, 1833, Caspar returned to his new tutor, named Lord, completely mortified, his shirt stained with blood, short of breath, claiming to have been once again attacked by an unknown person. He recounted, among other things, that his attacker had struck him with a white weapon, which turned out to be true since under his left lung there was indeed a wound, one too many, 
which inevitably fueled the suspicions of those who supported the hypothesis that Casper himself had organized his clumsy stagings, one of which was fatal to him. Yes, because he died a few days later from hepatic complications and infectious fever following his injury. In the end, we will never really know who Caspar Hauser was or what he really wanted. He took his secrets to his grave, and no one has really given a coherent explanation for this mysterious affair. The only certainty that has emerged since is that Caspar did not have royal blood, let alone that of Stephanie of Baden. According to some, Caspar was the abandoned child of a Bavarian occupant of Tyrol. According to other opinions, he was the child of a Hungarian writer, and another theory claims that he could have been the hidden son of a priest. At the end of the 1800s, in an orphanage in Mackay, Australia, about 19 children died in dramatic and especially very mysterious circumstances. All would have died of malaria, according to what was reported, but what really happened? Let's take a leap into the past to find out. The St. Joseph Orphanage was established in 1874 to house orphaned and abandoned children on a site in the north of May, today known as Bucasia. But in 1885, doctors and inspectors began to notice a significant increase in the number of child deaths and illnesses within the establishment. Thus, the surviving children had to be transferred to an orphanage in Rockhampton. Some sources report that a total of 19 children F would have lost their lives in this orphanage, and others round the number to about 23. Whatever the case, the figures were already significant enough to question the causes of death, especially since 10 children died in the six months following their move to Rockhampton, which represents more than one-third of the 126 orphans living in St. Joseph. The orphanage being built near a swamp, the blame was then thrown on malaria. But that's not the most worrying thing. The most mysterious thing about the case is that the burial place of these 19 children is still unknown to this day. We all know that Christian tradition requires that burials take place on consecrated ground, that is, a real cemetery where the children would rest, each with their own tombstone. And the fact that we do not know where these children are buried suggests that they may have been buried together in a mass grave or even far from the orphanage. Moreover, at the time, malaria was not very well known, and there may have been fear of possible contamination. Another explanation would be that the orphanage may not have had sufficient funds to buy tombstones for the children. Another more macabre hypothesis invites us to ask questions about the real causes of death. Was it really because of malaria that they died, or did these poor children die in more horrifying circumstances, and because of this, the perpetrators preferred to make the bodies disappear mysteriously? Historian my Duke Bettiderson made this case a real personal project and fought for a long time to pay tribute to these children who died in silence and in the utmost secrecy. In his book, the historian declared that he hoped that the mystery of the lost cemetery would be solved, but unfortunately, it remains whole. Now tell us in the comments what you think of these mysterious children, and don't forget to click here to watch another of our videos.